Okay, we're doing this video on a heavy wind and it's starting to snow, so let's get this done. We gotta spend five minutes up here first doing a background radiation test. What we're doing is we're testing for uh, blockage of RF radiation through various materials, both grounded and ungrounded. So let's get this started. We're gonna speed up the video so you don't have to endure a five minute test up here. Okay, as you can see, we got the highest peak reading we ever had in all five minutes was 0.11 uh, volts per meter. Now, just a background, we're about three miles from the nearest cell tower uh, and about 50 feet from the nearest smart meter, which I already tested and showed that it knows it's very low. So, let's get out of the cold and do a background radius reading inside the house. Okay, we're directly below the point we just tested about 10 feet lower inside the house. That is our target microwave up there. It's off right now, so we're not even involving that yet, but later we're gonna be using it. Now we'll start the test. So let's uh, clear this and turn on the acoustometer and we'll do a five minute test sped up again. Point zero 0.07 was the highest we ever got. So as you can see, the differences between the, the, the roof and directly below it in the house, big difference. But we needed that background radiation to continue on with what we're going to do next. Let me show you why I picked that location in this house. But first we need to put water or something in the microwave. Because our microwave is what we're going to be using as our test source for RF, our source for RF radiation. Okay, now I've done a video already about microwave ovens. Hardly gained any attention. Most people were interested in smart meters. The reason I picked the microwave oven for this test is because it's the most consistent, first of all, and it is also the highest RF emitter that you have in your home, bar none. While you're screaming about Wi-Fi, smart meters, cell phones, or even 5G, why are you screaming about 5G? It doesn't even exist yet. There's no standard set yet. We don't even know what it's going to be, at least at the time of this taping. But the microwave is by far the highest. Nobody's screaming about that. But here's, here's how we're going to do this. First of all, we're going to have to turn on our acoustometer. And you see it's just like the background. It's reading basically nothing. Uh, we're going to set this cook time to 1 minute and 30 seconds because I did do a practice run of this, so I, I know where to set everything if my practice run was correct. And within a couple seconds of starting this, it started now, you're going to see the meter just completely top out. Okay, so we can't do the test here. Shielding wouldn't make much difference. But before we go leave the microwave, I'm gonna wait till this gets 1.15, and then we're gonna set our timer so we know when it's gonna start, stop, because we won't be able to see the microwave very easily. Okay, so when it's 1.15, it's gonna stop. Now let's start backing up, about eight feet away, and the meter's just starting to drop. At this point, about 12 meters, I'm 12 feet away, I'm sorry, 12 feet away. This is the point above us where we tested on the rooftop, uh, and also where we did the background test. This is, the plant. this is why I chose that location. Let's back up some more. Try to keep the microwave in sight. Now we're at 20 feet, and it's still well in the red. Let's back up some more into another room. And now we're at 30 feet, and it's still in the red zone. A little more than halfway up the scale. And we back up some more. And as far back as I can get is about 37 feet, which is right here. And you still see it's in the red zone. Now let's duck behind the corner here. We can no longer see the microwave. We're gonna duck behind, uh, still about 37 feet, where we're behind pallets of a pallet of material and wall. And you see now it finally does start going into just barely into the yellow zone. The microwave's still on. Now let's do a quick test here. Okay, back to the microwave visible again before our thing shuts off at one minute and 15 seconds. We're gonna shut this door. It's a metal door, two layers of metal. 
and we're gonna watch here and you'll be, still be able to see it's in the yellow zone and now you can see obviously the microwave just shut off very very apparent now that's through two layers of metal all right let me show you the materials we're going to be testing here a wide variety of stuff that commonly available first of all what some call tin foil is actually aluminum foil that you get straight out of your kitchen and I've measured that using this now this is not the best instrument to measure this kind of thing but I'll do the best I can with what I got and basically y'all y'all know how heavy this stuff is this is, uh, measures about 0 0.05 millimeters so 0 0.05 millimeters uh, next we have copper sheet solid copper sheet a little bit thicker this is actually measuring at about 0 0.1 millimeters so twice as thick as the aluminum foil then we have lead sheet the lead actually measures 0.3 millimeters now we're going to test testing unless one more copper thing now although this measures uh, about 0.5 millimeters that's not a fair test with this type of material but this is copper mesh uh, screening as you will so we're going to be testing that uh, in the aluminum category also we have this sheet of it has insulation on it it's aluminum faced this is at 0.4 millimeters this rollback here something you can also buy in a hardware store and this aluminum uh, sheet measures at 0.5 millimeters so half a millimeter then we have a metal pie plate now I may not be able to get a good ground with this with the coating we'll see but I think it has a coating uh, this pie pan uh, measures 0.8 millimeters steel we also have this this is from a freeze dryer uh, basically this is stainless steel thicker this measures 1.7 millimeters so this is actually about twice as thick as our pie pan and lastly we have a piece of oriented strand board this is commonly referred to half inch or oriented stand, strand board which is point uh, I'm sorry uh, 9 sixteenths of an inch half inch is really 9 sixteenths of an inch the nominal size uh, but this actually since we're sticking with millimeters here this measures about 14 millimeters now let me show you what we're doing with our grounding next okay I pulled this plug out of the out of the wall to get a good demonstration here we got to show our ground and show that it's properly functioning so we have a fluke multimeter here with two probes and right now we have a ground wire hooked up to the actual ground wire straight out of the house uh, to test this what I'm going to do show you right now as you see it says overload right now oh well I'm going to put it on the ground wire and in the, the ground hole and you can see the meter takes a reading so we got good continuity so we got ground to this plug right here now we have continuity it's like now to check our ground here what I've done is I have brought in an extension cord from another part of the house and we're going to do the same test basically we're going to put it put a probe in there and a probe uh, I gotta do this where you can still see the meter and a probe on the ground socket there and as you can see the meter gives a reading so we have continuity throughout the house on the ground so we have a good ground okay that, with that out of the way now so what we're gonna do this testing here with grounding we're gonna leave this hooked up here and we're gonna take this other end and we're gonna put it on our test subject in this case the copper mesh and we're gonna clip it on there and that should give us a good ground on all the materials we're testing okay what I'm going to do is going to do a one minute duration test to save some time this is going to take a long time if I don't do one minute duration on each material both before grounding and after grounding we're going to start with the aluminum foil what I'm essentially going to have to do is I'm going to, have to use this clamp to clamp to completely cover that acoustometer and then since I'm here alone I'm going to have to go and start the microwave then come back here and start the test so let's set our first one up Okay, microwave is on. Let's turn on the acoustometer. And this is the peak up here. It's already breathing pretty high, but we're doing some shielding. And let's go ahead and start this in one minute. Okay, microwave is still on, but we had 1.62 after one minute. Now let's hook the ground wire up to our aluminum foil and try again. Okay, now we have our microwave on. We have the grounding clamp on the standard aluminum foil. We're going to run this for one minute just like the other. Let's turn on the acoustometer and go for one minute.
After one minute, 1.53. Okay, next is our aluminized insulation board. And this will stay up there just like so. Hopefully. We turn on the acoustometer. Our microwave's already on. And one minute. All right, after one minute, 1.87. Now the insulation board again with our grounding clamp on it. Acoustometer on. Go for one minute. Okay, after one minute, 1.56. Let's go with our roll of aluminum next. Okay, now we have our aluminum sheet here, which measured 0.5 millimeters. Microwave's already on. Let's turn on the acoustometer. And go for one minute. After one minute, 1.20. That's the end of the aluminum. Let's go with copper next. Except I almost forgot we need to do it again with the grounding clamp on it. So let's turn on the acoustometer. Microwave's already on. And let's go for one minute. Okay, after one minute, 1.10. Now let's go with copper. All right, the microwave's on. We got our thin copper sheeting here. Let's turn on the acoustometer and go for one minute. After one minute, 1.67. Now let's put our ground strap on there. Our ground strap is on. Let's turn on the acoustometer and go for one minute. After one minute, 1.63. Now this might be a little hard to see, but this is the edge of the copper mesh right here. We have copper mesh here. This will be interesting. Let's turn the microwave's already on. And let's do a one minute test. One point two two on the copper mesh. Now we've got the copper mesh grounded. Microwave's on. One minute, let's begin. One point one seven on the copper mesh grounded. Next we have the sheet of lead. One minute. Lead sheet that is not grounded, one point eight eight. Our lead is now grounded. And let's begin a one minute test. One point seven six on the grounded lead. Next is our steel 0.8 millimeter thick steel pie pan. One point seven seven on the pizza pie tray. All right, our ground is in place. Let's see if we have a problem with the connection due to the paint or coating that this has on it. Find out. Yep, 1.37, I'd say we probably did have a good ground. Next is our 1.7 millimeter thick stainless steel tray from a freeze dryer. 1.22 for the stainless steel. Okay, the ground on the stainless steel is kind of hard to see. I'm going to show you what's here. There's the clamp. Putting it back on there. And we'll go one minute. One point four one. I believe that's our first anomaly. Maybe we don't have a good connection, but it sure seems like a good connection to me. Next, we'll have the wood. I'll put it here so you can see. It just kind of the shadow makes it look strange, but we've got complete coverage. But that's just shadow back here. And let's begin. Well, obviously the wood didn't do very much because it topped it out at 6.0. Now one more test to do. How about two layers of drywall? Okay, where we are now, we're on the other side of the wall where that microwave is. We are about the same distance as we were on the other side. From the front of the microwave to where we were before, 12 feet is about the same distance we are now from that wall, from, from where the back of the microwave is to where the, where the, the RF meter is right now. So... 
between this smoke detector here and that light switch right about here is the microwave mounted on the wall on the other side of this wall. This is a standard 2x4 wall with drywall on each side. So we have the metal back of the microwave and we have two layers of drywall with a stud or two there in interfering in the process somewhere along the way. So we're going to test that to get an idea of the difference shielding of just a wall, a standard stud wall. One minute. And after a minute, we have 1.44 volts per meter. Okay, so what have we learned here with these testings? Basically, you, I'm going to put all the numbers that we just gathered in the description box so you can look over all the materials and the thicknesses. And really it's a matter of deciding, because all the materials, other than the wood, all the materials seem to do quite a bit of shielding, it's probably best to choose by cost of the materials and the practicality of installing them the way you want to get the shielding effect you want. So from here it's your decision on what material to use based on all these numbers you just saw. Now grounding didn't do a lot but it did help a little. Grounding in all cases except for one seems to have improved the shielding effect so it's probably good to ground as well but it's probably not necessary absolutely if you, aren't, don't, if you don't want to do that. So Take this information however you wish, and I thank you everybody for watching. So long.